Hello YouTube Preppers, this is the Coms Prepper. We're up here in the Radio Shack with ICOMS ID51 Alpha, D-STARS, Digital Handheld Radio. In this configuration I have the handheld connected to my external antenna here at the homestead. And what I'm going to demonstrate here is a connection from this handheld radio to a local repeater in Alexandria, Virginia, which is linked through the D-STARS network to a repeater outside the Cincinnati, Ohio area and I'm going to have a QSO with a station out there over D-STARS. He's working into that station with a mobile unit, a 5100 D-STARS radio. And we're going to have a two-way conversation here over the D-STARS system with this handheld radio using two repeaters linked through the internet in full digital mode or digital modulation. So I'll get that QSO going and I'll be right back. KD4BDM from K1DOS. K1DOS, this is KD4 Media. Hey Brian, to confirm, you have the uh, 5100 mobile, the ICOM 5100, correct? Yeah, that is correct. KD4 Media is currently talking to an ID 5100. All right, on this end, I have an ID 51 Alpha Plus handheld hooked up to an external antenna, and I'm just running about 5 watts. And I would say the repeater is about eight miles away from this location. That's pretty good. Uh, connecting it to an external antenna works good. I'm about uh, 15, maybe 20 miles uh, from my repeater uh, through the hills and the valleys of Kentucky. So I'm running medium power, which I believe is 15 watts. Well, the digital communications here sounds perfect on this end. And again, I want to thank you for taking the time to do a QSO here and give me an opportunity to demonstrate the D-STAR system. Department of any time, I uh, enjoy making contact on D-STAR. Roger that. Well, I appreciate it. Uh, best 73s, and I'll be clearing your final. Copy that. If you want to, I can uh, do some data links for you at another time or even later this evening. Well, that would be great. Uh, I'll have to get set up for that and get back to you. Have a good evening. This is KD4 BDM. I'm going to be clear. 73 is from K1DOS. All right. I'd first like to start by saying I am not a D-Star expert. I've only had the handhelds for a week now. I have been reaching out to other amateur radio operators that are very familiar with D-Stars to get a better understanding of how the system works. So if there's a mistake here on the whiteboard, please leave a comment down below so I don't make it again. Or if I say something incorrectly, again, please leave a comment down below so I can make a correction. But I'm going to take a stab at doing this block diagram of the contact you just heard between myself here in Virginia and Brian out in Kentucky. Here in Virginia, in Alexandria, Virginia, is a repeater, W4HFH. ICOM designates the VHF repeaters as ports or port C, so that's why you have a little C here. So I had an RF connection between the two antennas to this repeater. This link or this connection was initiated by Brian out in Kentucky, so I'm going to attempt to explain how we did that. Again, this is a completely digital system and it requires some routing to get between the two stations. But for a brief overview, you got a repeater system here in Virginia, a repeater system here in Kentucky. The systems are comprised of, of course, the RF components. In this case, I have C shown for VHF because that was the contact. You can also see B for UHF. They connect to an ICOM controller, repeater controller, and then a Linux box running a gateway operating system. There's several different OSs out there, so we're not going to get into the specifics of that, which, of course, connects to an Internet service provider router, which connects to the Internet. Same configuration on the other end. You're going to have... RF components, VHF, UHF, repeaters out there connected to an ICOM repeater controller box, to a Linux box running a gateway operating system, connected to an internet service provider router which is also connected to the internet. If you're running ICOM's gateway OS, I think it's called G2, the systems will connect to what they call the US trusted server down in Dallas, Texas. And this server kind of acts like a, a DNS server for DSTAR. It allows the different systems to connect and become aware of the other systems out there so they can map to them. So this repeater here can know the IP address to this repeater. 
they pull this information from the trusted server but there's other systems out there and other operating systems and I don't know enough about them so I'm not going to go into depth but just so you know how these systems become aware of each other in this case we're going to use the trusted server the repeater systems connect there and become aware of the other systems out there another component is what they call reflectors and these are standalone little servers that individuals stand up and they're like conference call bridges and I represented that with triangles here and you can cluster different repeaters together so anything that's heard on a reflector is shared on all the repeaters out there but the reflectors also allow non RF components to come in and access these RF components so in this example I have a really poorly drawn laptop connected to what they call a DV dongle so this allows non RF users or radio users to come into a reflector and share in the reflector resources so to set up this link Brian in Kentucky had to configure the routing in his radio because this is digital there's three key fields when he set this up the UR field or UR call field and that's who you are calling the RPT1 field and the RPT2 field and I kind of consider the RPT1 field to be the on-ramp to a highway how are you getting into the system and then I look at the RPT2 field as the off-ramp how you're going to get off of the system where you're going to come out of so in Brian's case he was going to connect to this reflector over here that my repeater system is associated with and that's called the 62C reflector he put in his radio he was calling you're calling reflector 062C and for his first transmission he put the L command for link and that told his gateway to create a link between this system here and that reflector system out there after that link was established his system told him that it was established he then changed this field to CQ 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 so he could talk to any station he put in the RPT1 field his on-ramp K4CO the VHF repeater or port C which matches there that's how he's getting in but how does he want to get out of this system in the repeater 2 field the exit ramp he put K4COG for gateway and that told this system here to route his signal not only out to the other RF users in his area but out through the gateway through the link he had just created to the 62C reflector his signal came up through the ISP router here in Alexandria Virginia to the gateway box here to the ICOM repeater controller to the RF piece, in this case the VHF repeater, to the antenna, out to my radio. I had to do the same routing in my radio, but since I was not establishing a link, my calling setting was set to CQ, 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 any station. My on-ramp, RPT1, was W4HFHC, that port, and my off-ramp was RPT2, W4HF. HG for the gateway which told this system not only do I transmit out to other handhelds and mobiles in the area but I should be routed out to the internet to the 62C reflector which Brian was already connected to so when I was heard here in the reflector he could hear me and because he linked to it when he transmitted through here it came through the reflector up through the repeater here in Alexandria and we had communications now I hope I didn't mangle that explanation too badly but that's kind of a block diagram view of what happened. Brian in Kentucky created a link with a link command in the UR line through the system out to the internet to the reflector which is kind of like a conference call bridge which came into my repeater system here out to my handheld. His repeater knew where my repeater was because the systems are talking to a server where they get information about each other so they know how to map to each other after we had all this communication take place the last thing Brian had to do was re-enter the UR command and put a U there to unlink it telling his gateway to disconnect the link to this reflector so that's my explanation how I understand it of how that QSO took place I hope I didn't mangle it too badly and again if I made mistakes please leave comments down below so I can correct them we're gonna get these ID 51 Alpha Plus handheld radios in the field this weekend at the retreat location with the Android application and demonstrate text messaging and sharing pictures out there. And as always, thank you for watching my videos and subscribing to my channel. 
This has been the Comms Prepper with my first linked QSO on D-Stars between Alexandria, Virginia and Kentucky. Thanks for watching, guys.